and welcome to another video. My name is Claire and I am the designer and teacher behind Bob Wilson 123. And in today's lesson we are going to learn how to make this really easy bottle holder. You can adjust it to make a plant pot holder. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle with a large eye, a handful of stitch markers. Mine are already attached to the project so you're going to need at least four. It's for counting so if you're really good at counting change then that's great but I always lose count so I always need stitch markers. A crochet hook to go with your yarn. We want tight tension. I'm using two strands of a worsted weight yarn. This is a 10 ply or an Aran weight. This project will work with any weight yarn. You could use one strand, you could use one strand of DK which is a number three weight yarn or an eight ply here in Australia and you, should, you could also use two of those strands of yarn you could use cotton, you can use acrylic, you can use whatever you like. So I'm using a 6mm crochet hook that is also a J size crochet hook with two strands of worsted weight yarn. The yarn I am using for this project is Red Heart Super Saver. As you can see I've just got a skein that's already been used. This is a number four, where is it? This is a number four weight yarn and it recommends a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a six millimeter, but I am using two strands at once. It's 100% acrylic. We want to make a slip knot to start off our crochet, but we're going to leave a little bit of yarn before we do that. So I have, I would say approximately 12 inches of yarn. It's up to you. It depends how long you want your tassel that's on the end, on the bottom of the drink holder or plant holder. So it's up to you. If you want a really long tassel you can have it long like this or if you if you don't want one at all you can sew in your ends. So that's up to you. So what I've been doing, this chain has already been completed and altogether we need four of these chains. So I'm just going to make that approximately the same size and then do my slip knot there. You can do slip knot however you like. I totally did that the wrong way. <laughs> it's not tightening it up. I think I had my yarn on the wrong side. Yeah, that's better. For my chains, I did 200 chains. I know that sounds a lot but it works up really quick because it's just a chain stitch. You may need to make yours longer, you may need to make yours shorter, but what you can do is once you've finished your chain or once you're doing your first chain, put it over your shoulder how you're going to wear your drink bottle, if you're making the drink bottle holder obviously, and put it over your shoulder and it's going to go like a bag strap. So this chain that we're making gets folded in half. So we need eight strands of yarn to make our holder, but we're only going to make four chains and then we're going to fold them in half. This is a great beginner project. And you're just going to keep going until you have 200 of those. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we have our 200 chains or however many you're going to do ready. I have my 200 chains done and then I'm going to cut my yarn but I'm going to make it the same length as what I did when I started with. So just cut that off. doesn't have to be exact but it's just a guide and we can trim it at the end so that's all good. And then yarn over and pull through. Just pull that snug. And we want to make four of these. Pause the video and I'll meet you when we have our four set. We are going to need about 30 centimetres or 12 inches of yarn. I'm just going to guess. So what we're going to do is thread our yarn needle. So what this is a bit's going to do, we're just going to create the, the top of the bit that goes on the shoulder. That's the easiest bit to, easiest way to describe it. I apologise for that cut on my finger. Ever had a cut and you have no idea how you did it? That's one of those ones. What we need to do is put all the ends together so that's on one side and then do the same on the other side put all your ends together because we want to find the halfway mark so we're just going to grab all those together 
having all the ends lining up and then we're just going to find the middle so I'm just going along one side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out you can't see off camera obviously but you can see that I'm stretching it out because what we want to do is find the halfway mark which is where my finger is at the moment so I'll just show you what I've got I'm grabbing that end and pulling so it's tight Whoa. and then I've just got my finger and that's just finding the halfway mark so grab our halfway mark so now that we have the middle we are going to grab our yarn needle that we threaded we just want to lay them all flat you can do this one of two ways you can just wrap the yarn around like wrap it around but you can also stitch it so that was my halfway mark I'm just going to go three chains let me just turn one over actually turn them all over so they're facing you so it's nice and neat if they'll stay there and work say two chains from where the middle is so I'm going to go through those two chains through the next two sorry chain not chains there's only we're going, going, going through a chain we're just going through the V's of the chain but we're going two stitches away from where we're holding it this bit the first bit's the hardest bit because you're holding them okay so we're going through all the chains we're going to pull that through but don't pull your yarn all the way through just leave a little bit hanging off and we're going to grab our needle and we're going to go gonna go that is so Australian apparently my phone's not on silent so here we go I might have to turn it on silent <laughs> so go back through the chains we're gonna go back through I'm just picking up the V's on the front of the chains we're gonna pull that back through don't pull tight on this end don't pull that loop really tight just pull it so it disappears see how it just disappears and then we can tie this in a knot I've been tying not lots of knots in my crochet recently oh, I never used to do that leave it on the edge so just tie that in a knot and we can sew that other end in later so we've gone through two lots so one two so now we're in the middle because we went two chains away from the middle so we're going to go through the next slot which is our third we're going to do four all together and we've done that one so we want to go down to this one like I said you could just wrap some yarn around if you didn't want to faff around with this but it does look quite nice when you're finished so pull that yarn through again don't pull it tight just so it disappears and we've got one more lot to do because we were two away from the middle there goes my phone again I'm gonna to have to put it on silent after I finish this apologies newbie mistake forgot to put my phone on silent you think I'd know that by now 10 years of teaching crochet on YouTube so through those lot and then pull that through again don't pull too tight you can see the loop just there it will disappear so that just creates this little sort of woven section that looks really cool you could go as many as you want like you don't need to stick to how many I did but yeah don't want to make it too tight because you want it to be all the same width that's just there so now we're just going to finish off oh, guys hang on I need to put that phone on silent and just make sure it's not an important message all right so we're just going to finish that off so before we pull that loop tight we're going to put our yarn needle through through there and just fasten that off and we can just sew in our ends now so I'm going to just sew them through these chains again because I think that will be the easiest just shoving it through anywhere And also it'll make it more secure. Oops. Don't 
go through too many. So I'm just going to fasten that off, do another knot, and I'm going to just poke that through and I'm going to cut it off. I just saw that message and I've got a feeling it's going to be a horrible message. So I don't want to read it until I've done this tutorial. <laughs> Not a horrible message in some being mean, just um, bad news. Okay, so we have a little handle. Like I said, you can make this as wide as you want. Oops, got another little end there. I forgot about you. I'm just going to sew that in as well. And now starts the and now the fun starts. Don't want to go too close with my kill my stitches. There we go. So now we have all these cool looks like an octopus, right? It's got all these legs. You're gonna to need to find somewhere in your house, or you could use a you could use another person. They could just hang on to that part for you. Uh, you could use what do you call those clip things? You could use one of these and like clip it to a table or something. But you know what I used? I used the door handle. It worked and it was really easy to do hanging on the door handle. Okay, so I've put my yarn through. This is the bit that we just sewn. Just put it through there and I'm going to clip it on the end of the table. I'm just going to show you what I've done. I've clipped it. This is my table. Just put a bit of cardboard there to help so it doesn't strap, scratch it. So I've, yeah, I've clipped it on and then I've got my strands all coming down like this. I have mine pinned to the table up the top there and we want to put our strands of chains so that they're not crossing over anywhere. So just check up here that these aren't like over each other. So make sure they're all laying flat. Approximately three quarters of the way down, that is where we're going to start making our knots. You don't need to know any macrame or macrame, I say macrame, knots to do this project. So we have all our strands and none of them are overlapping and we're going to go to the two strands, we will pull this in a bit, the two strands that are on your left hand side. I'm just going to push those aside. So grab your two left, go to your three quarter mark, you can measure this if you want to, I've still got all that left over there. Go to your three quarter mark, don't forget this is going to stretch so it'll be good. And we're going to make a knot and I have no idea what type of knot this is but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop so I'm just going to push my yarn lay it over the main yarn strands and then flick my yarn strands through the loop so going underneath and up through that loop pull them through and then scooch up your knot I think, I think my thing's twisted, so it should be like that. Go to our next two, so pop them aside. Go to your next two and do the same thing. And you want your knot in the same spot. So make a loop. So I'm grabbing my yarn, putting it over the main strand, putting my fingers through my loop and grabbing those yarn tails. I'm sorry about this angle, but it's all I can really do at this stage. Push them to the side, grab your next two, making sure they're not twisted at the top. And we're going to make another knot. We're going to do this all the way across. Put them to the side, grab the next ones. So this is easier if it's hanging on the door handle because your knots, you can see where your knots need to go because you can see the level easier. I'm 
but just make sure I don't know if you just noticed that that was like that and it's twisted just here make sure that's not twisted so make sure your yarn strands are down like that okay now what we're going to do is we're going to tie the next round of knots we're going to skip this first one so we're going to pop that aside and we're going to grab this one and the first one of so we're grabbing the second one and the first one of the two strands can you see that so that would come down like this got the legs we're going to skip the first one so we're putting this one aside and we're grabbing these two if you're making this for a plant pot and it's a really big plant pot you're going to make sure that the distance between your knots is larger so we've done two inches and you might want to go three or four inches but I would suggest practicing making one for a drink bottle just to get the idea and then you can expand by making larger sections between the knots we're going to go down about two inches and we're going to tie another knot And we're just going to, ones we just tied, we're going to pop them aside. Then we're going to go from the next one. So this is the second strand of the second lot here. So that one there, it's the second strand. And then the next one, we're going to go and get the first strand of that one. And we're going to tie those in a knot. About two inches from the first knots that we did. I'm just I'm just leveling making sure they're at the same level okay so we've just done this one so we're going to put these two aside this is the second strand of this one and then this one we want to grab the first one and we're going to tie those two in a knot And again, we want to have about a two inch gap between the first knot and the second one. Okay, so we need four knots all together, but we've only got three. One, two, three. So what we're going to do is this strand that we've got left over and this very first strand that we've got left over, we need to tie those in a knot together. We are going to go to the back of our work. So we're just going to grab these middle strands and flip them up out the way so that we can work around the back of our work. So these two, we're gonna tighten a knot. Again, about two inches down from our work. Before you tie it off too tight, make sure it's about the same length. Yep. Okay, so we're going to pull these strands back down and now it's all going to be joined can you see how there's a, a hole in the middle just in here that's the tube where we're going to put our drink bottle or plant pot finished our second lot of knots and we're going to start the process again so just make sure that your your strands of yarn are all laying straight none of them are twisted that's not twisted there so we're going to start from the outside so pop them ones just to the side we're going to grab these two and we're going to put the left one to the side so flip that over, over there out the way we're going to go to the next knot and we want to grab the first one so we want that one but we don't want this one so we can put that one aside and we're going to tie a knot about two inches down so that's the first knot we're going to pop these two aside we don't need those at the moment we're going to grab the next knot across and we're going to grab the one that's left over and find the next knot it's not this one here that's the one at the back because if you have a look here 
you lift it up, you'll see where your next knot is. It looks like it's this one, but it's not. You just want to lift it up and see which one is your next one. And you'll see because you've got your yarn strands coming down. So we're going to grab this knot and we're going to put the right hand side one to the side. And we're going to grab the two center ones. So you're going to have one coming from this knot and then one coming from that knot there. So we're going to tie another knot. These are all approximately two inches apart. So we're going to pop these ones to the side. And then we're going to get our other knot, which is here. Just going to make sure that's not twisted. And we're going to grab this one and that one. And we're going to tie a knot. So we've got three knots, one, two, three, and these two have not been tied together. So now these two need to be tied together. So let's just grab this amount of yarn here, flip it to the back, and we're going to tie a knot in that one. Just, if you want to flip it over, and then flip it back, so that's in the middle, pull these down, and you can see we have our third lot of knots. So you've got one, two, three. We're going to do it one more time. So again, making sure they're all laying in the, the way they go. We're going to pop the left one hand, the left hand side of, aside, and we're going to grab the second and then the first one of the next one. And we're going to tie a knot. And we're going to repeat this across. Pop that aside, grab the next available one, grab the next one. You see how this has like a V there, upside down V? That's the next one you want to grab. Again, popping them aside, the next available knot, sorry, the same available knot, but we're going to grab the next one and the next one is around the back here so we're going to grab the left hand side the right hand side gets put aside and we're going to tie a knot again about two inches so now we've got our three knots one two three and then we've got our two the leftover so we can pop them up like that and then we want to tie these two together but we're going to flip it over and we can tie these in a knot almost done and we just want to lay it back down again so you should be able to see all the way up through that's really hard to show you but you should be able to get your hand all the way up in there there should be a tube if there's no tube something's gone wrong <laughs> so now we're going to grab all of our strands make sure they're all just laying nicely nothing's twisted over or anything i have a length of yarn i would say this is approximately about a yard or a meter long and we're going to pull all our knots down and then about two inches from the bottom, we're going to grab our yarn and we're going to wrap it round to make sort of like a tassel. You know what a tassel looks like? I've just doubled it over and I'm going to pull that through. So make sure it's even and we're going to wrap our yarn around and we're going to wrap it tight and we're just wrapping it. Why is that blurry? 
we're going to wrap it, where's the strands, here we go, around. Oops, I can see a loose loop there, so I just need to, there we go. Wrapping this around, that looks really good. You can make this as wide as you like. I'm just continuing on until I run out of yarn. So when I've got approximately one, two, three, four, to let's go five inches left, we're going to wrap it around, but we want this loop to be loose. We're going to wrap it around and then we're going to put our yarn ends through the loop. I'm going to pull it snug. We're going to grab our yarn needle and thread our yarn. And then I'm just going to sew it back up through, if I can, through under these little wraps that we've got here. No grip on my fingers like ever. Never have. It drives me insane. I used to be a cashier or a checkout chick and pack people's groceries and I could never get the plastic bags to open because I had no grip on my fingers and God, it used to drive me around the bend. <laughs> like, I just can't, look, I can't grab hold of it. It's not funny, people. <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> Alright, so then we can trim that off. And then we've got all these pretty things left. Now I've noticed that one of my chains is really short. Did you get that too? Oops. Don't want to do that, obviously. <laughs> so what you can do is you can trim off your yarn tails. Mine are a bit too long, so I might put something over the thing on the screen. Because that's a lot of yarn. Waste ditch. If it bugs you that some of your chains are different lengths, then you can easily fix it. You can undo your chains. You just need to find the knot that's at the end and undo the knot. And then grab a yarn needle and see how we've got this loose loop. Just use the end with the eye, it's easier. We're just going to pull through and just undo it. You can also use this when you have too many chains on a project. So if you want to make them all the same lengths, I've got one, two, three, four chains just here. So I can make them all go back to four chains. One, two, three, four. So I need to pull out three. It seems to be coming undone really easily now. So now I've probably undone too many. One, I need to put one more back in. And then finish off. Okay. So you can do that. And then I'll just have to re-trim that end. Because now obviously it's got longer. Because I've taken stitches out. I just noticed that if you pull too hard on these strands. They'll actually come through this loop. So what I'm going to do is. Just down the base here. I'm going to stitch through chains. Just got a length of yarn there. It's just one of the yarn tails that I trimmed off. 
and I'm going to go through I'm just going three chains like what we did when we did the handle right at the top the gathering at the top and I'm just going to anchor it I don't even know if I was in the screen then I'm sorry I was just literally just sewing through the chains and I'm just going to anchor it on the bottom strand there go through a few chains just grab one or two of those strands that we've wrapped around go through a couple of chains We should get back to that yarn end. Now that should stop the problem. Yeah, that heat's better. It's not pulling through now, but before my chains were pulling through. So we can tie this off. And all we've got to do is sew in those ends and finito. I know that's foreign for Finnish, but I've got no idea what language it is. We'll just hide them again underneath our wraps. And trim off. I hope you enjoyed making this bottle holder with me. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy crochet.